Hello and welcome to the Total Packers Draft Report. I'm Larry McCarran. Since we spoke last, the Packers have completed the trade, drafted 13 players, moved on to phase two of their off-season program, signed Jordan Love to a contract extension, and held their rookie minicamp. Besides that, things have been rather quiet here at Lambeau Field. Joining us now, a man who's never quiet, Wes <laughs> Hodkowitz. What stands out, Wes, about that 13-player draft class? Well, looking specifically at the offensive side of the ball, Larry, speed and athleticism, explosiveness. The Packers, they needed to add some more bodies, specifically at the skill positions. I felt like they did that in this draft. And you're looking at the tight end position, first time the Packers drafting two tight ends right off the bat in the first two days. It's really the beginning of the seven-round era. It's exciting right now in Green Bay, these pieces they've put around Jordan Love. Wes, if my math is correct, the Packers have now drafted three wide receivers two years in a row. And for the rest of that story, here's Mike Spofford. The Green Bay Packers select Christian Watson. He's got it! It is the rookie, Christian Watson! I don't think there's anything this guy can't do. Speed kills again. You got a guy that could go get it in Romeo Dobbs. Touchdown, Dobbs! He is becoming that guy. Touchdown, Samari Toure, the rookie! That's who the Packers have, but who'd they get? Jaden Reed, wide receiver, Michigan State. Caught. Touchdown, Reed! He's 5'11", but he plays much bigger, has that my ball attitude. Oh, Jaden Reed climbs the ladder. What an effort by Dontavian Wicks. I'm excited. Just wanting to get in and work and be the best receiver group in the league. The Packers select Grant DuBose. Deep down the near side for Grant DuBose. What a catch! Six wideouts drafted in one calendar year create options for Jordan Love and questions for Matt LaFleur. On paper, they all look great, but how do they gel with Jordan? How much can they learn and how fast can they learn it? I'm ready to go out there and compete with all I got. I'm going to let the play speak for itself. Reed all the way! Wes, I think one of the most intriguing players in this draft is Jaden Reed. I was watching him at the rookie mini camp, and he is so sudden. He could fake you right out of your little Packer undies. I'm pretty sure he could, Larry. And I, what stood out to me the most was just his smoothness too, right? They talk about his explosiveness, his ability to cut, but it was just how seamless everything is for him. He's not the biggest receiver you've ever seen, but when you see him move and the way he can kind of get from point A to point B, it sort of understates exactly why he was so successful at Michigan State. Of course, the Packers drafted not one, but two big tight ends who can really, really run. And during the rookie minicamp, we sat down with both Luke Musgrave and Tucker Kraft at the same time. The Green Bay Packers select Luke Musgrave. Wow, now there's the tight end. High draft choices, same position. Tucker Kraft, tight end. With the big gain, and he's in for the touchdown. Now in the same room, do you look at yourselves as colleagues or competitors? I say colleagues. To be a good tight end room is to be great. I don't think it's, it's awesome just to have one good tight end that can play. We might have been selected into the same room, but at the end of the day, we're trying to compete with each other to crush our opponents. First full day of work, you meet, do a walkthrough, meet some more practice meet some more after that when the day was all through what'd you think um i had a lot of fun uh it definitely was a lot of meetings but it was, it was a lot of fun going out and practicing first days of packer was pretty special yeah, i definitely thought you know i'm gonna hop right on day two and install and that's that's what luke and i did we sat in the hotel room ordered some uh, ice cream and cookies and, and got in on the pass install it's one thing to deal with one guy who's real long and real big and can run, and it's a whole nother ball of wax to deal with two guys who are real big, real long, and can run. I bet you guys become 
you know, complementary pieces of the puzzle. You look back in the past and you see an offense that has two great tight ends, they can keep them on the field, one to stretch, one to run underneath. And I'm a big fan of even having three tight ends on the field. Yeah. I mean, we obviously already got some really good tight ends in that room, and hopefully we can have as many tight ends on the field as possible. Makes the catch, dives ahead, yes sir! Luke, the thing that jumps out about you on tape is your vertical speed. Nobody can run with you. Is that a really nice hole card in your arsenal? Yeah, I wouldn't say nobody can run. Obviously, Tucker and I are both fast, I think. Um, but um, I, I wouldn't say, yeah, I, I think you're fast, buddy. I think you're really <laughs> fast. The speed to both of our games really helps us. Look out, and he's got a first down. Tucker, the thing that jumps off the tape is the run after the catch. And then I go back and look, and in high school, you were a running back, and as a senior, you had over 1,400 yards rushing. That's almost not fair. You were designed to do this stuff, right? I mean, you do a little more digging, you see that I was playing against eighth graders, <laughs> playing play nine-man football. But that has definitely helped me, being able to catch the ball, getting vertical, and then seeing just run lanes, and then just knowing the scheme, knowing where the football goes, too. Don't know if you're the goal-setting type, but hopes, dreams, and aspirations for your rookie season. Just to do my best every day and, and hopefully contribute to the team in whichever way the guys that get paid to, to make those decisions see fit. Like Lou said, I want to be on the field when explosive plays happen. You know, I want to contribute. I want to do my 111. I want to be there to help. I want to be there to contribute. Guys, welcome to Green Bay and best of luck. Thank, Thank you very much. After the break, we have Brian Gutekunst in studio, but first, a look at the calls that changed some young men's lives. The Green Bay Packers select Lucas Van Ness. Come on, let's go. Feels so good to be a Green Bay Packer. Go Pack Go. So excited to be a Packer, the historic franchise the Packers are. That's the top this one. All I can ever ask for is all I ever wanted forever. This is a blessing. The Green Bay Packers select Tucker Kraft. Colby Wooden. We go on free. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Sean Clifford, quarterback from Penn State. Go Pack Go. Well, Packer knows it. Everybody, we are joined by Packers GM Brian Gutekunst. Brian, thank you for the time. And no team has a bad draft on <laughs> draft day. But after this one, when you came down, you seemed genuinely, genuinely pleased. Am I reading that right? Yeah, obviously there's a lot of hope this time of year with all 32 teams. But I think, you know, for me, I think the process is always a big part of what we do and kind of watching the process unfold. Uh, the board really felt right, and uh, we were just able to uh, accomplish a lot of the goals I think that we were hopeful to accomplish. And so, yeah, very excited about this group. Afterwards, I was talking to Milt Hendrickson, your director of football operations, and he told me, and he's a real football guy now, he told me, we got some dudes in this <laughs> class. Who might be the dudes in this class? Yeah, no, I think they all have a chance to be, but I think certainly up at the top. We acquired some guys that I think really fit the profile of what, uh, you know, Green Bay Packer is all about, you know. Um, guys who are very, very talented, uh, very, very productive, um, but they're also, you know, the, the work ethic that they show, they've shown so far in their college career, um, and just kind of the character of the people really fit our locker room. Tight ends, wide receivers, you have supplied Jordan Love with some additional weapons. 
but those weapons are young. How should we temper our expectations? Yeah, I don't want to put a ceiling on anything. You know, these guys, obviously, they're young and they are inexperienced, but I think this guy's the limit. And it's really going to take all those guys um, coming together with the current group that we already have. And um, I, I really don't want to put a ceiling on it because there's no reason those guys can't go out and perform in the National Football League. Will there be ups and downs just like every single year? Absolutely. Um, but they're all very, very talented. They're very smart. And uh, I think if they come together as a group that uh, they can accomplish a lot of things. Let's see. Lucas Van Ness, Colby Wooden, Carl Brooks, common denominator, pass rush potential. That is the name of the game in today's game, is it not? You have to affect the quarterback. And um, that was one of the goals that I talked about earlier that we wanted to accomplish. We wanted to add some depth uh, with our pass rush. And I think uh, all three of those guys fit the bill. Um, they can rush a passer from not only on the edge, but on the inside as well. Um, so I think hopefully as these guys grow and learn the NFL game, that'll add some versatility to our group. Drafted Anders Carlson in the sixth round. Where does your kicking situation stand right now? Well, obviously he'll come in and Parker White's uh, here as well. So watching those two guys compete will, will be good. I think obviously Rich Versace had a strong relationship with Anders. And so I think um, that's a positive thing for us. We had a lot of information about him. Uh, he worked through some injuries in college. Um, but we feel very good about his talent. We feel very good about the person. So that's obviously uh, not settled yet and won't be probably until we get to the regular season. Um, but we like both guys and their talent. Much to my dismay, you didn't draft any offensive linemen. <laughs> Clearly, you're comfortable with what you have coming back. We've invested there quite a bit over the last few drafts, and it wasn't our intention to not invest in this year's draft. Um, at the same time, the way our board looked, we realized there was going to be probably a, a point that if we didn't get one early, that the opportunity to make our football team is going to be tough just because of the group we have coming back. We had 13 guys coming back. We usually go to camp with about 16. Uh, all 13 of the guys come back we feel really, really good about. And so we knew there was going to be really good competition to begin with. We would have loved to added someone up there at the top of the draft. It just didn't fall that way. Um, but as you guys know, we very much believe um, offensive line is, uh, you know, winning in the trenches is, is key to success. Jaden Reed, a little smaller than your typical Packer receiver, but over the years, I've noticed when you guys go smaller, you go special. And the example that comes instantly to mind is ja Alexander. Yeah. He's not a prototype size-wise, right. but he's special. He is special. Um, we've always kind of used the term that if they're going to be under our kind of uh, Mendoza line, so to speak, which Jaden is not, he's just above it. Um, but they kind of got to walk on water. And um, certainly we think he um, has a ton of ability. Um, for a guy his size, his ability to win the contested ball really stood out to us. Obviously, he's got very good speed and quickness to get open. And then he, he offers so much versatility, um, not only on offense, but on special teams as well. Year in and year out, you have a notoriously good locker room. Mm -hmm. And that's no accident. What traits do you look for in guys you're thinking about coming in to see how they'd fit as Green Bay Packers? Yeah, it is very, very important to us. And, and our guys, our scouting staff does such a good job throughout the fall and the spring um, when they're on these college campuses, spending the time um, with the people that have been around these guys, um, you know, for not only one year, but two, three, and four years, seeing them grow up from the time they were 17 years old to where they are now. So we spend a lot of resources and time. Our guys do a fantastic job. Um, when you bring a guy into that locker room, we take it very seriously because of who who are bringing them there with. We have a really good group of guys, and when we bring guys in there, um, it, we think it's you know out of respect to the guys that are already there, um, that it's the right kind of guys. And if they're not, they don't usually hang around very long. Different team, might have to get it done a different way, but do you find the change kind of invigorating, kind of exciting? Yeah, I think that's throughout the building as well. I think um, every, every season's a new season. You never really know how it's going to go. You never really know where you're going to be strong, where you're going to be weak. And it's kind of a, an evolving thing as you go through the course of a season. But it's very exciting, I think, for our staff. You know, the, the, I think everybody's really eager um, to kind of find out what we have, what we can do. Um, it's really been a positive uh, attitude so far. So we're excited. Um, we're a long ways away from, from training camp in that season. But uh, seeing the guys out there working together, um, that always gets the juices going. Thank you, Brian. Thank Coming you. up, more on Total Packers. Don't go away. I'm Lucas Van Ness. Here's a little bit more about me. 
I got the nickname Hercules from a couple teammates. Uh, my freshman year when I came in, one of my older teammates, Noah Shannon, you know, mentioned that my body physique and the way I looked represented Hercules and the name that stuck in the building and uh, obviously it's followed me since. My go-to uh, music in pregame is Adele. Really? Yep. Rolling in the deep. I wore the number 91 in college. I like to say I can curl 91 pounds in one arm. Preston, thank you for the offer, but I'm good with number 90. My personal favorite highlight is my safety against Nebraska during my sophomore year when our entire team had the flu. He's getting rid of it. I'm most excited to learn from Mashawn Gary. He's been at this for a while and excited to see what he can teach me. The best follow is on Instagram, at Lucas underscore Van Ness. Running onto Lambeau Field for the first time will be a dream come true. Excited to see all my work come to fruition and excited to, you know, walk out in the green and gold and be a Packer. That dude is ripped. And while he played both inside and outside at Iowa, it looks like his focus will be outside as a Green Bay Packer. I'm super excited, you know, the way they, you know, are trying to utilize me and put me on the edge. I think, uh, you know, I could find a lot of success out there. But again, it's a learning process, a learning curve. You can tell he's, he's got the heart, he's, he's got the drive, and we're going to push him each and every day to try to get him there as fast as humanly possible. He's going to be a fun guy to work with. The coaches, the players, uh, you know, the system has been awesome. I'm just excited to, you know, continue to build this process and, you know, learn more about Green Bay. The Packers addressing pass rush on day one with the selection of Van Ness, and they also addressed it on day three with the selection of Colby Wooden in the fourth round and Carl Brooks in the sixth. And Wes, those guys lined up as interior rushers during the rookie mini camp, and they're a little different than the typical Packer interior rusher we've seen. These guys are more movement guys than power guys. And when you think about it, in today's game, with mobile quarterbacks, those movement guys matter. Now, the Packers also addressed the secondary on day three. Yeah, Larry, and two very interesting defensive backs that they were able to get in Carantine Valentine and also with Anthony Johnson Jr. out of Iowa State. Valentine, I really like this kid because he's 21 years old. He bet on himself going out for the draft. A press man corner that I think is really going to really put an impression on people in the NFL. But Anthony Johnson Jr. is the one that I really like because some people thought he was going to go earlier in this draft. He ends up being there for the Packers in the seventh round. And listening to him on his conference call, there's a confidence about him. There's a swagger. I'm very interested to see him play, especially after betting on himself that last year at Iowa State, making that move to safety. Now he's going to try to make that position his home in the NFL. The Packers also drafted a quarterback on day three, Sean Clifford, in the fifth round. Now, a lot of people didn't have him going that high. But Sean Clifford put some serious skins up on the wall while at Penn State. Mike Spofford has more. Clifford in the pocket, going deep down the right sideline, it is gone! We really like what he brings to the table. Started a lot of games in the Big Ten, has a lot of experience. Beautiful delivery, Penn State first down. Four-time captain Sean Clifford is a proven winner. The numbers speak for themselves. Sean is a highly accomplished quarterback. He's the all-time at Penn State between yards and touchdowns. Clifford going deep. Touchdown! He recorded more than 100 scores, including 15 on the ground. Clifford with a run all the way. Touchdown, Penn State. He's got some athleticism. He's a natural thrower. All the things that we look for in quarterbacks, he possesses. Fires, touchdown! Add it all up. The Packers got a gamer in Sean Clifford. Wes, of course, the object of the entire draft exercise is to get better, both <laughs> for now and for the future. Did the Packers get better? Yeah, I think so, Larry, especially when you're looking at the future side of this thing. Right now, the Green Bay Packers only have three guys over the age of 30 years old on this roster. A 13-player draft class coming in right now, and a lot of those guys offensively are going to be able to work with Jordan Love, who's been here for the entire offseason program. Defensively, a lot of veterans coming back. Those young guys are going to figure out what the standard is. It's exciting times in Green Bay. Wes, as you know, I've been around here a long time. And this is, at the least, one of, if not the most impressive draft class I've seen. Van Ness, Musgrave, Kraft, 
big guys. They scare you getting off the bus, <laughs> but they can really, really run. And Reed, he's not a big guy, but he can shake a good looking group. Thank you, Wes. Yes, sir. And thank you for watching. That's it for this edition of Total Packers. Until next time, take care. With the 13th pick, the Green Bay Packers select Lucas Finesse. Nicknamed Hercules because of his strength. He is a dynamic athlete. Take it down, Finesse. Nobody on the collegiate level could stop his bull rush. He's able to really collapse the pocket and apply the kind of pressure that wins in this league. Van Ness with the sack. Feels so good to be a Green Bay Packer. Go Pack Go. Jaden Reed. We always get good receivers in the second round. They do a great job of finding receivers in the second round. And this is one with speed. Caught touchdown. Jaden Reed. Guess what, Jordan Love? We got some more help for you. Luke Musgrave. Tucker Kraft. <laughs> Steady blazing. That's exciting. Both those guys are big, physical, fast. Thought we did pretty well right there. What an individual effort by Dontavian Wicks. He had a per catch average over 21 yards. Deep down the near side for Grant to Bowles. What a catch! Touchdown, Lou Nichols. The Green Bay Packers select Colby Wooden. I feel like my versatility is my biggest weapon. Colby Wooden. One of my favorites, Carl Brooks. From a production standpoint, he's off the charts. Nowhere to go but down on the ground. A huge sack. You want long athletic corners, Carrington Valentine from Kentucky. Carrington Valentine with the interception. Anthony Jackson knocked it out. Athleticism, speed, quickness. The guys that we took on defense, they have that. Kick is on the way, and it is good for Carlson. Clifford, touchdown, Penn State. He's a great leader. He's fearless in the pocket. You know, hopefully these guys can come in and learn and grow. The expectations are high, and we're excited.